Hi, I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm the host of Best of Us Investors. I invest in the future. Uh, I, I follow the lead of the future is faster than coming faster than you think. And as a result of that, I focus on events of what happened that is going to make something else happen. I believe in action and reaction. And I, I, I just look back to things that I've experienced. And I think the most important one is uh, in the 80s when I first heard the word internet and the World Wide Web. And I wasn't bright enough to understand that was going to change my life. And I didn't invest in uh, Microsoft and Apple. Uh, so I I wasn't attuned. I'm now attuned. I recognize that the big, the most important event that happened in my life was um, the the coronavirus, and it's going to change our world. One of the ramifications is biotech, and you have seen I've spent a lot of time. If you come to my channel on biotech, the other thing I think that it is done it is it showed the broke break the break in our supply chain, and it's going to change our manufacturing. <clears throat> And that brings forward uh, 3D printing. And so I have spent quite a bit of time studying the 3D printing business and learning more about it. And I have, I have basically focused on um, 3D systems, X1, desktop metals, and now I'm bringing into my focus um, strat, S-T-R-A-T-A-S-Y-A-S. Stratus, S-S-Y-S. And these are the American companies that are leading in this, in this field. Um, I've also, also learned through Seeking Alpha how to learn more about what these companies are thinking about. I have always believed that it's important not only to buy the stock and buy their their financials and buy their fund fundamentals, but more importantly, to buy their CEO and understand where his head's at and where he's taking the company. And so I have found a way to learn more about the CEOs that I want to share with you in this video. But it's interesting, I did a video um, just uh, yesterday, I guess it was, on uh, Amazon and um, Parkash Sapkoda, one of my uh, followers, commented under that video, what about X1? Well, Parkash, I was planning this morning to dump X1. And I can share, I want to share with you how I came to the conclusion to dump X1 and then what I then learned uh, just this morning to put that on hold for a second. So that's what this video is all about. I want to teach you a new way to um, learn more about companies. And then I want you to understand what I think is going to happen and why I think it's really important for you to become focused on 3D printing. And then I want to talk about where I'm taking this channel to help you in those directions. But first, let's get the preliminary stuff out of the way, the required disclosures that I'm not your financial advisor, and I'm merely here for education and entertainment, um, and then we'll get down to this. Best of Us Investors presents Carrie Griegmeier. Okay, I said I was ready to bail, sell X1 uh, because of what I learned through uh, participating in their, um, their first quarter reveal of their, their first quarter performance. And I'm able to do that on Seeking Alpha Premium. So let me show you what I do and how I use Seeking Alpha Premium to get to know the CEO and CFOs of companies. So watch this. This is my Seeking Alpha page on X1, and I want to show you how I use it 
to make me better informed as to whether I want to own a stock, whether I want to continue to hold it. This is, as I say, the page for today, and you can see X1 is up almost 6% today. And I come to this news section, and I look for this paragraph with a squiggly line over it, and I click on that, and I go to uh, the page where I can find um, the play, the call for X1 with Jim uh, Harder, the CEO. What I'm trying to do is get a feel for who Jim Harder is, what his position is with the company. I know he's the chief executive offer, officer, but where his head's at relative to this this company. So I click on Howdy, play call. And welcome to our first quarter 2021 earnings call. And we're pleased to report record levels of both recurring revenue. You can revenue see I can read the in the manuscript quarter, as he which shows speaks the it. strength of our product offerings. And obviously here model, he is merely reading from, from a prepared script. And <clears> but what you'll find as you go through this, start you get a year. feel for first quarter how he feels about his company and, and where he sees it's going. I went through this um, last week, and I came away with the conclusion that these people got hurt real bad by um, COVID. And uh, as I listened to him and his CFO, uh, I, I came to the conclusion that these people were beat, um, and that was uh, Doug here. And I, I, I was prepared to basically bail on X1, and then this morning I come and I see they're up 6%, and I dig into it to find out. Well, what I realized is X1 and the other 3D companies are not really in the business. Well, they are in the business of selling 3D printers, but their their end goal is to sell software to run those 3D printers and manage them, and number two, to sell materials. If you think about it, you, you let's say a, a, a 3D printer, you buy the big mass producing one, and you spend uh, $50,000 on it, well, you amortize that and depreciate it uh, over the years, and so it almost becomes a non-expense. Uh, but where the real money or, or where the, the real income for, for X1 is to sell the materials that go through that printer, because that's continuing income. And as I have learned, this is the real hurdle to keeping many manufacturers out of 3D printing because the cost of those materials have been been high. Uh, it's a new product. It's, it's uh, metal chips with an adhesive in it. Um, it has to be chemically produced or, or manufactured and then sent. But from, the, from X1's point of view and other um, manufacturers of printers, this is a, a repetitive and continuing source of income. I sit here and I look at my Hewlett Packard printer and I say, I think I spent about $250 for the printer, but over the life of that printer, I'll probably spend three times that in ink cartridges. And that's what the 3D printing business, I believe, is all about. What I need to understand is um, is it the same as my printer business that I can buy HP and I can potentially buy their ink, but there are third-party suppliers who will sell me the same ink cartridge, I believe, at a lower price than what I can buy it from HP. And so that's one of the reasons I am striving to get an interview with the CEOs of these of these companies, and I have one for uh, desktop metals next week. But as I as I was ready to uh, dump X1 because I came away from this report with not a good feeling of where this company was um, relative to how they got beat up 
from um, from the coronavirus, I said they're going to have a bad 2021 and probably have a bad first quarter of 2022 until they get their organization reset. Um, and then I read they have created a new partnership with one of the leaders in the production of the software that manages these. And that was what created the 6% uptick in X1's price this morning. So my goal here is to teach you how you can learn more about any company you are thinking about buying, and more importantly, how you can get to know their staff, their CEO, their CFO, their, their Monica is the investor in relations. This is, to me, a real asset that I'm going to continue to use. So based on that, this morning I was ready to sell X1. I just didn't believe that I heard the enthusiasm I wanted to hear from a CEO uh, of how they're going to move forward. And I said to myself, I think this company is going to have a bad 2021 and will, will not be a good buy until 2022. And I literally got on my computer this morning and pulled up my screen as the, as the market opened, and I saw that X1 had lost yesterday about 4%, and that's why I didn't sell it yesterday. And I saw that it had come back 4%, and then I saw it start to move higher. So I went to my news source uh, on my, um, um, my, my screen, and I found that they were merging or they were creating a partnership with computer-aided technologies. And so I dug into computer-aided technologies, and it's a private company, but it is the nation's leading provider of engineering software. Well, 3D printing is engineering. So I went to their, their website and, and looked and found that what they are really doing in, in the printing, the 3D printing business, there's really three elements of it. First, you buy the printer. Then you, you have to have software to, to manage that printer. And the software uh, will help you in the design function. It will help you schedule and 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 manage that computer. And that's what computer aided technologies does. The third part is the materials. And this is the the real wake up that I have had in in this business. And I do some of my best thinking at six o'clock in the morning when I'm laying in bed on my back. And I I I, I got to thinking. Um, when I was with Polaroid, um, we used to sell, we had a camera called the Color Pack 2. It was a, pla a plastic bellowed camera, and it sold for about $25, and um, it used our film, and it could only use our film. And we used to say, we would be willing to give you a Color Pack 2 free if you will commit to buying one pack of film a month for the next two years. We, we'd be willing to do that. And I, and I got to thinking, you know, that's kind of what I'm seeing, and maybe that's what's going on with this 3D printing business, that the, 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 money, the money's really not in the printer. The money is in the reoccurring revenue generated by the software and the materials that you push through that printer. Okay, um, and I believe that's where this business is. And this partnership that X1 has created with computer-aided technologies is merely a, a way to create a sales force or a new selling feature to help them sell their printers. And then the, next, and then the, the real payoff is not in the printer. The software is, is a continuing payoff, but the big payoff is in those materials. So I got, there's, there's um, X1 is in the industrial and metals end of it. So where is that? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is Volkswagen. What if 
And, and from my research, I have learned there are about 30,000 parts in a Volkswagen automobile. And about 1,000 of them today are seen as potential 3D printed parts. And that would include everything from the metal gears to the rubber hoses to the, the dashboard to, to, virtu- to, to, to all kinds. Anything that I could design in a form and then lay out and print it. They, they call it uh, using sand type products. So, and what that means is you, you take the metal and a, and a resin, uh, an adhesive, and you, you print it out. Think about print ink going on a piece of paper, and you just build layer upon layer upon layer upon layer, and then you adhese it together and you can do, and, and, and they're there in particles about the size of sand. And then through heat processing, you fuse them together, and they're actually stronger than the original metal that they had. They're lighter, and, and you can control it in your environment rather than in a foundry or something of that nature. But the real money in this is in that materials. And that's what I came to the realization. But if I'm going to, if I'm X1, I've got to come to you, Volkswagen, and say, okay, I recognize this is all new to you. And yes, you're probably going to have to have a technology officer who is in charge of 3D printing, but we're going to provide you the software that he can work with that will manage this, and we're going to put in um, in, uh, artificial intelligence inside that software, and your your 3D printer will learn from every time it prints, and we will then take that software through computer-aided technologies, and we'll hook it up with in the cloud so that your printer not only learns from every print it runs, but every print within the network of printers that we have all over the world. So so we're delivering a package to Volkswagen that basically makes it a no-brainer, and they reduce their carbon footprint. But now the real key and the real hurdle to get past is that cost of materials, okay? So what these companies are really becoming is not 3D printing companies, but suppliers of 3D materials. What I've got to find out, is it just like my printer? Is there going to be a third party who's going to cut my price? And if that is going to happen. How do I keep stop it from happening? Does does that violate or negate the warranty? Does that software not react well to the other um, to 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 third party materials? That's what I've got to learn. And in that effort, uh, I have yet to be able to get a um, an interview. With the um, the with uh, John Hartner, the CEO of X1, but I do have a a um, interview scheduled for Wednesday. Uh, no, for June next Wednesday with um, with the CEO of who is it uh, of de- three of Desktop Metals, Rick uh, Fullop. So I'm going to learn about that, and I'll share that with you. And that's where I really want to take this channel. I, I, I think I know where the, where the Internet of the 1980s are. Uh, and I think they're in biotech. I think they're in 3D printing, robotics, and electric vehicles. So my challenge as a YouTube creator and your guide into this is to connect you with the CEOs and ask them questions so that we understand their business better. 
and so that we can make better investment decisions. And that's that's my commitment to you. Now, I think I, I've got about 148,000 subscribers, and I think that's what got me the interview with Desktop Metals. Uh, I'm dealing through their public relations firm. But in order for me to move up the, the ladder, move up the food chain on these CEOs, I need more subscribers. It, it's that simple. So if this is what you want, if you would like eventually for me to get an interview with Mark Zuckerberg or, or Sergey Bream or whomever, if that's what you would ultimately like me to deliver to you, you got to subscribe. You got to join my tribe. You got to draw join the community that I'm building that want to become better investors. I think just just like what I think I shared with you relative to how I'm using Seeking Alpha is a is a tool that you can put in your toolbox to make you a better investor. Uh and that's what I want to do. So, um I'm going to hold uh Park Cash, to answer your question directly, I've decided to hold X1 at this point. I'm back up to even. I used to be up almost 100% on it. Uh, but they, as I said, they had a bad 2000. Um, but I think I see them doing some smart things. I think I see them putting the package together. Because truly, if I'm if I'm the CEO or I'm the chief technical officer of Volkswagen and you want me to change my production line from one of me buying parts somewhere else to where I have a, a facility that I have your printers in and I'm buying your materials from you, um, I, 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 I need to have that package put together. And, I, and, it, and it looks to me like X1 took a very important step in that direction. But again, I need to know more about it, and you need to know more about it. So that's what this channel's all about. That's what Kerry Grinkmeyer is all about. Um, and as I see them buying and merging, I'm realizing what they're really doing is creating their sources for the materials. It's just like Polaroid. It's just like Gillette. <laughs> Gillette would give me the razor uh, just if I'd sign a contract to to buy new blades every week or, or change the blades in my razor every week. I don't because I don't shave that often. Uh, I guess that'd be part of the contract too. You got to shave every day. Um, so that's where I'm going with this. And I'm, I'm inviting you to join me. Go to bestofusinvestors.com, um, give me your name and your email address, and I'll send you a link to our Discord. And we're building this Discord to get you more involved so that you can make better investment decisions. You can learn how to keep more of what you make uh, as a result of knowing our tax code, and that you establish a goal to use the stock market to help you build family wealth. You are never going to build family wealth on a nine to five job unless you convert that job into your own business, which I highly recommend you do. And that'll be, that's part of where I want to take this channel as well. Okay, thanks. Um, and I hope this was helpful and I'll continue to work on your behalf. Talk to you tomorrow.